of a sudden I look over and I see someone running, someone late coming into training and I see Stan Collimore running in. I was like, what the hell? Stan Collimore just turned up to training about 20 minutes late and I was like, rah, this guy. Welcome to another video. It's me, Derek Asamoah, aka the Tottenham Pele. Hope you're all well. Where we left off on the last video, I'm 18 years old, playing for Asante Kotoko. We was on tour in Germany, where we played against Hamburg and St. Pauli. I was about to sign my first professional contract with um, Ghana side Asante Kotoko. Um, the coach of the team left. I didn't know whether to go back to Ghana or whether to um, go back to England and try my luck in England again. So anyway, I decided to leave Germany and head over back to England. I landed back in England, I decided to give him my old team barking manager a call and let him know I'm back in England and that if he was willing to take me back, I would like to come back and play for his team again and get some games under my belt. It's a bit of an anti climate playing for such a huge team as Santa Cotico and having to come back to England to play for um, a non-league side barking. But at the same time, I had to get my head straight, I had to get some games under my belt, I had to keep evolving as a footballer and I can't stay still. Um, I did join Barking again, I played a few games for them. So season finishes and the summer comes, turned 19 over the summer. So now I'm practically a man um, with no job, no education, um, nothing really. And I'm just in limbo thinking um, what to do. So I decided to go back to Barking and play for um, Barking again. I started off the 2000 and 2001 season with Barking and during pre-season, we had a friendly against Southend United, um, which I had a really good game. I scored against Southend United, which again gave me loads of confidence. No disrespect to Barking, they're a brilliant football club. I was just getting impatient. I was just getting frustrated. I come from a place where I played against the likes of Hamburg and St. Pauli, and I, was, I played in front of um, 40 to 50,000 people and now I'm back here embarking playing some professional. It was a major anticlimax and I was really really desperate to get back out there and, um, and give it another crack at professional football. And, um, my friend Sean from Southend United, he told me about a program he was on which was called ProTech and um, which is similar to the program we did in Southend United. Um, I'm 19 years old, if I come along I'll probably be the oldest player, player there and I don't think it's going to be really good for me. He said, no, um, just come along. At least you'll be able to get um, education at the end of it if um, nothing works out. I've been trying for four years to try and break into professional football and this will, will give me a chance um, to get an education. So I came down and done training with the team and the director really liked me and he said, if I want to stay on, there's a place for me. But I have to take my education serious and I have to do my education. So I said, you know what, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to sign up. When I went to ProTech, there was a lot of good players and I really, really enjoyed the challenge. And you know what? I made some lifelong friends that, that I'm so grateful for. I don't want to mention no names because there's just too many people to mention. So during my time at ProTech, um, I also decided to leave Embarking um, and join a team called Hamden and Richmond. And um, basically that came about because one of the coaches at ProTech was playing for Hamden and Richmond. So he recommended me to the manager and I came over and the manager liked me. So I played um, a few games for um, Hamden and Richmond. I think a couple of leagues above Barking. So it was a, um, so with the ProTech program, every now and then we would play against professional team and this particular day um, the, a game was arranged against um, Leicester City um, under 18s or under 19s so everybody was excited for it everybody was like yeah Leicester City is a premiership club and they're coming down I was so excited for, um, for the game and now it's all about getting into the team for the Leicester game the coach came in named the team and I was in the starting lineup so I was buzzing I was thinking to myself yo Here's another chance for you to go out there and impress. A great opportunity to show the Leicester City coach what you're made of. Forget about the score, forget about everything, because more than likely you're going to lose against Leicester City. The team's going to lose. No matter what the score is, keep working your ass off for the team and keep working your ass off so that Leicester City can see what type of player you are. Just go out there and give 110%. The game starts, I've never seen and an amateur team dominate a professional team like this before. We had the whole team, everyone was just hyped. We absolutely dominated the game from start to finish. I can't remember what the scoreline was, but I think we won the game 2-1 or, or something like that, or 
two and I can remember scoring two goals. I, I can't remember the first goal I scored, but the second goal I can remember clearly. The players brought me down, so we got a free kick outside the area. I never take free kicks, but for some reason, I felt so confident that I was going to score this free kick. So I placed the ball down, took a deep breath, and like, Derek, this is your moment. Put that ball in the top corner, looked up. The wall was blocking one side of the goal and the keeper was um, guiding the other side of the goal. So I just lifted the ball gently over the wall. Not too much power, not too much pace. I just gently lifted it. I could see the keeper scrambling to try and get. I said, don't you dare, don't you dare get a hand to this. And the ball just flew into the top corner. I, mean, I can remember <laughs> running to the corner. All of us going, what was that? What was that? What was that? It's such an iconic moment for me there. I can still remember it like it was yesterday. Everybody played so well. I was so proud of the team. After the game, everyone's buzzing, everyone's celebrating, everyone's like hyper. Yeah, we just beat Premier League by Leicester City. Everyone's like buzzing, everyone's happy. And so the coach comes in in the changing room and says, guys, Absolutely well done. It changed and we'll have a meeting um, upstairs. We all got changed, went upstairs and he was just like, guys, you played an absolute blind over game. I'm so proud, you made me proud. We need to perform like that every week. And I also have some good news that the coach of Leicester City was very impressed in with you guys as well. And he's out to see three players back on trial. So everybody was like anticipating who these three players were. So I was just like, you know what, I thought I had a really good game. Please God, let it be me, let it be me. So anyway, he went on and started, started naming the players, Steve Morrison, um, Habib, and Derek Casamoa. You've been chosen to go on the week's trial with Leicester City. I could not believe it. I was just like inside. Obviously, there was other players around me, so I couldn't over celebrate him, do you know what I mean? So I kept it inside, but inside me, I was absolutely buzzing so i think this trial was scheduled for the week after so i think i had a week to prepare and in that week in training I put everything into training at the same time i was trying to avoid not getting injured as well and still i couldn't believe it i thought there was going to be a time when the coach was going to speak to me and say do you know what um the leicester city trial is off it's off with their protect program and um, we all had to sign with an agent his name was Eamon dempsey i didn't know anything um about him i just went along with it do you know what I mean? So we all signed with this guy, Emin Dempsey, and he took us to Leicester City. I think the trial started on a Monday, so we must have drove up there with the agent on a Sunday. And um, they put us in a hotel. So I had my own room and I was just in a hotel and I was just, just all I could think about is, wow. So I made sure I went to bed early so that I can have a fresh start in the morning. Day one of training, I get to the training ground for the first time and looking around, I'm seeing that, wow, this place looks absolutely beautiful. Look at this, look at the grass, the grass looks perfect. Um, we get out onto the field and it was just so amazing, it was just so perfect. When you look across, you can see the first team players training over there. Looking over there, I'm thinking, wow, that's where I want to be. I need to work hard here and get over there, that's where I want to be. I think I trained re really well and the game had been arranged against West Brom the next day and I'll be, I'll be playing in it. Second day of training, get to the training ground and it's match day against um, West Brom then we all get, get changed and get out the man decided to start me for that game um, I played as a striker scored two two goals but after the game um, I spoke to the agent the agent said next training session you'll be training the first team I could not believe it that I was going to be training the first team I was like wow I just couldn't believe it I said stop lying to me are you sure this is on a Tuesday and normally Wednesdays are days off so the next training session is going to be on a Thursday so I had a whole day to myself on a Wednesday trying to soak it I just couldn't wait for Thursday to come along the Thursday comes and I get to the training ground I was with Steve Morrison he was he was going to be training with the youth team still and so I was on my own so I felt a bit lonely I felt a bit isolated and I was all nervous and I met by someone who showed me where to go and get changed and in there and it was just me and a couple of the of the up and coming um, youth team players that usually train with the first team so I went in there and got changed with them I get changed and I go outside early because I wanted to get a few touches of the ball before training starts so I'll go out there and I'm messing about with the ball getting getting warm and then slowly I see Peter Taylor coming out and the rest of the first team um, following after so I was like this is it Derek it's show time Peter Taylor comes along shakes my hand and slowly and surely they all started coming out and every time a player come, comes out every time I see a player I'm like saying their name I just couldn't believe that I'm actually on the same pitch as these players that um, I watch on TV it was around October time and Leicester City was sitting at the top of the Premier League everyone was going on about Leicester City I know not so long ago Leicester City won the Premiership but before that Leicester City 
every now and then they seemed to have this weird run where they were beating everyone and at the time they were just smashing everyone and sitting at the top of the league so you can you can tell the place was buzzing everyone was buzzing Leicester City had some really really good players they had the likes of Tim Flowers, Frank Sinclair, um, Mazzy Izzet, um, Robbie Savage, who was Steve Gappy, Stephen Oaks, Matt Elliott, they had that, that striker um, Adi Akinbeyi, Dean Sturridge, they had Neil Lennon, they had Stan Collimore and they had Roberto Mancini. I did not know Roberto Mancini played for Leicester at that time when I was there. According to Wikipedia, Roberto Mancini was a Leicester City player. This is how long ago this trial was. <laughs> That's jokes. I had no idea that he was there. As you can see, Leicester City had a really, really good squad. I had to forget about the names. I had to forget about what these guys have achieved. And I was there to do a job. I needed to be focused. I needed to look at these guys. as These ain't superstars no more. These are people I need to compete against to be able to show the coach that I'm good enough. I can remember training session started and we done the warm up and everything and passing drills. I was feeling really comfortable. I was really fluent. Didn't have any problems. I was feeling really confident. All of a sudden I look over and I see someone running, <laughs> someone late coming into training. And I see Stan Colmore running in. I was like, what the hell? Stan Colmore just turned up to training <laughs> about 20 minutes late. And I was like, rah, this guy must run things here. I can tell straight away that he was one of those guys that just turns up to training <laughs> when he wants and just does what he wants. He didn't even say anything to anyone, he just come in, done a couple laps around the pitch and joined, and joined in training. So in football, there's this thing called mount. And when a coach starts mount, you have to find a teammate to jump on the back of. So it was just doing the, the usual to run around the ball. And I hear the coach start mount, so everyone's rushing around, trying to find someone to jump on. And no one went to stand Collimore. And I was literally the only one left as well. I ran over to him and there was no way I was going to let him jump on my back. Because this guy's about six foot six, six foot seven. So you know, I managed to leap high enough to jump on, jump on his back. And then after we've been about three seconds, he just flung me off and I was like, what the hell? This guy is absolutely insane. I had a really, really good training session. I was really happy with my performance and the coach was happy with the performance as well. And he said that um, now on, I'm going to be training with the first team. So I was like very happy. I was so happy that I competed really well. I was still so happy that I wasn't out of place. Everything I know is off the streets. Everything I know is what I've learned myself. Everything I know in football is what I've taught myself. So I trained the first team for a whole week. I'm no longer in a hotel. I've been putting digs with another player. I felt part of the furniture. I felt part of the, I was chatting to the players on the regular. They were impressed with me, especially at the Akinbe. He took particular interest in me and he was just asking me how I am every day. He kind of took me under his wing and he's really encouraging encouraging me telling me how good I was and he's like the coach really likes me and I have a good time